Okay, thanks again for dropping into my studio. Today we're going to talk about uh, uh, signing prints, evaluating them, and so on. <clears throat> my name is Dick Ensing. I live in Tennessee. I'm a Tennessee artist. I live next to the Great Smoky Mountains. And I print everything I paint or I catalog. Everything has a number. But let me show you. We talked about in one of the free ones, and you can look up that one, that we talked about not signing your painting until you finish scanning it, putting it in the computer, cataloging it. Now, here's going to show you. We have a finished print up here. And another a cheap way, if you want to try printing the, your uh, laser prints today, and I use a Brothers laser printer. It does 2400 DPI. Now, laser won't last as long as, a, as the inkjet. It'll last probably 25, 30 years, archival, maybe 50 years now. And I've tested these. I've left them out in the sun and, and tested them, and uh, the, uh, they, they don't fade that, that much. But anyhow, I use the laser a lot for making my cards. We sell a lot of cards from my prints. And all this stuff, if you want to write me on the Internet, I'll, I'll give you that Internet my uh, email later. You can write me and ask me about some of this stuff. But today, let's just sign this print. Now, here again, where are you going to sign it? This print was done. The painting's done. It's already cataloged. And I signed with a nice, find a nice pen, a, a pen that'll be archival. You know, most ink pens today are archival. They'll last and they won't fade. I don't sign pencil anymore. A lot of people are still into the pencil thing. That's a tradition that's been, don't ask me where it came from. But I'll sign this print here. And here again. It's only got one signature, this sign. Now that looks like almost original. Once you put a mat on that, you'll have a nice little print. This is done with a laser. It's a whole lot cheaper sometimes to do with a laser. This print I can sell for, for a whole lot cheaper than I can sell. You talk about the price between paintings and prints. So most of my paintings go 800 to 1,000 to 2,000. But a print can go anywhere from $20 to 150. The maximum print size we have is 16 by 20, and it usually retails for, I think, uh, $125 in archival paper. Now, take your print once you've done this, and I'm going to show you a couple others. And here's a color wheel that I've brought up here. And color wheels basically go from cool back into the warm. Most of your color wheels you see today go from warm here to cool. This is the way I like to set my palette up, and this is a real good book if you look the uh, matter of fact Canson has one and you may even write them and they'll send you one of the color books the guy goes from cool to warm and it's a good way of thinking now this painting here if you look at it falls in which range basically a lot of orange so it's right over here very little green so it's right over in this range right over here now this is the opposite here I've just reversed this what's the opposite of this if you want to make put some real zing, you can remark this a little bit. And what is the opposite here? Kind of a bluish, purplish. Now watch what happens when we take, and I'm going to take a uh, uh, little stroke of the brush here, find a good brush, and we'll take this color basically right in here, which is pretty much out of a cobalt or an ultramarine. Uh, and watch what happens when we, we put a little, see how that's saying? Now let's go a little lighter, watch what happens. And I play with my paintings a lot to find out what's going to happen when I add a different color. And I call this a sour note. See what happens? See? Here again, this paper here, this is a nice, nice paper. It's got a textural quality to it. You'll have to pick out your papers. There's so many papers today. This has a nice textural quality about it. You can even paint on this paper. You see that? You see how it... Now watch what happens if I add, a, say, a purple, which is totally opposite of the... Uh, a little bit of white so you can see that. See? That's the opposite. And I do a lot of evaluating to see because it helps me when I go out to paint. Sometimes interior decorators are smart. They understand color complements and colors next to each other. Let's take another picture to show you. Now here's one here. Hadn't been signed yet again. Let's sign it real quickly. Put it in. Sign it. Signature. Where are you going to sign it? Well, if I sign it here, maybe okay, maybe all right here. Sign it in the light here. I like right here. Okay. Now that's only got one signature on the print. See. Now 
Where does that fall on the color spectrum? We're talking two different things here. We're talking how to sign, evaluating your print, and what happens. Okay, this one here, basically, it's over in this range here, okay? It's got a lot of the colors here, the purples. It's got a lot of the blues. It's got a lot of greens, but it's got very few, just a little bit right up in here. But now if you take this and go to the opposite here, which is basically, oh, nice, here we go, a nice, nice, uh, uh, let's see, this is a nice orange right here, okay? And I've got a little bit, but watch what happens when we add it. Basically, it's complement. Let's take an orange here. Let me clean the brush first here. But do a lot of playing with your prints, and it teaches you how to use color. Watch what happens. See how that brings the color right out? It's a complement to a lot of these colors. And you can do that and say, well, next time I go out to paint, uh, I may do something like that. And you know, I asked, I watched Brackman one day painting, and I was studying with Robert Brackman. And, and uh, one of the, the other teachers I was working with, Bill Schultz, I said, Bill, why did he stop demo, demoing at that point? I said, he only demoed for about 10 minutes. Bill said he ran out of knowledge. I said, he did? Yes, he composed himself, took a little break, came back. So at certain points, if you don't know what to do in a painting, leave it. Get yourself composed, come back, study it, then work with it. Well, here again, I thank you for dropping into the studio. I hope you learned something today. There's a lot of beautiful free lessons that you all can just sit all day long and watch. My name is Dick Ensing. Look me up on the Internet, dickensingartist.com. You can write me if you've got any questions at dickensing at bellsouth.net. Thanks again.